Uh, just a quick note, something that I need to point out in terms of the design. Uh, this currently isn't really conforming with uh, the requirements for fire separation between apartments. We've got like a unit here and, a, and we will have a unit here and the distance from here to here is going to be less than 900. That's because it's intended that there's going to be a, either a continuation of this party wall or a, a fire separation buffer between these. Um, that's something that we're going to add later. We're not going to do that as a structural element. Uh, for now because we want to talk about the possibilities of those rather than um, be I guess defined by that with what we're using so we won't worry about that sort of thing at the moment just like at the moment the reality is we're showing a wall on both sides but when we create this as a, a module file we're actually going to need to remove one of these walls or remove part of these walls so we don't end up doubling up now let's start to try to put some of this furniture in that we see in the um, trace below, but we're not necessarily going to copy what's there. Furniture and fixtures, I guess, are the main things that we're looking at with our objects, our ob object library. And again, this is using ARCHICAD 21's default libraries. I haven't added any libraries to here, so we'll see what's available to us um, and the configurations that they come in. And of course, we could potentially change it after that. Basic library has our furnishings, and that's where we're going to start. Generally, I would start with bigger items and then work our way back down from there. Let's start with the, the bed double. We see that this is going to come standard in 1800 wide and 2000 long. So that is generally a, a queen size bed based on Australian standards. Um, but it depends on what sort of headboard and maybe end we have. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, I'm not really concerned about mattress sizes at the moment. And I'm going to go into the 2D settings just to see what pen it has. Now currently that's got a size 4 pen which is quite thick. I'm just going to change it to pen 1 so it's not too thick. Now the thing that we have to be very careful of with any of these objects is the pens can be overridden in the floor plan and section. Currently it's not. We see that they're both not ticked which means it's not overriding. I'm just going to change that to one anyway and I'm going to change these as well just to avoid it from happening later on. But other than that that's okay. Now what we can do sometimes, this is just a bed so I'll just place this for now and then again my method is place and then move rotate rather than trying to get it um, perfect straight away. So that's just a bed without bedside tables. Uh, the other alternative to that is we could exchange that for furniture layouts. So then if we go to a bed layout we see that it comes with uh, some of those things already which is great. So generally I'll use the, the furniture layouts wherever possible uh, to avoid having to place multiple objects. Whenever I can group objects together, it's probably best. Now, the only time I would not do that is if I'm trying to do a visualization rather than just documentation. And if I'm doing visualization, it might not be giving me as many options in terms of the aesthetic that I'm after. Now, in reality, is there going to be queen size beds in each of these rooms? Probably not but it's a really good way to start to make sure that you're determining as a design solution is the room big enough to be able to allow for them. So we see here that this is very, very tight. So the reality is that this would have to be more like a uh, double size bed. That's, let's say Australian double. I've slept on some Japanese doubles that are a lot smaller than this. Um, but we could also do other things. Maybe this would be single bed or um, bunk beds or a bed and a desk or something like that. But that's probably good enough for now just to start with. Obviously, this room's already a lot smaller than uh, the other rooms, this room being the largest, as this is, I guess, the master room as it's got an ensuite. Now, that's some of it. What else do we need? Let's move a copy of this. Why do I move a copy? Just because um, it helps to have an instance to then replace. I'm going to use the sofa lounge. Now it's not really a good representation of what we had previously, but it's a, a good starting point to give us an idea of how 
how large it should be. Now I've rotated that, and that's not at all the sort of configuration that I'm seeing here. So what I could do is adjust that, get rid of that, and then in terms of its size, I could then start to adjust this. Maybe I call that 1500. And that wasn't what I wanted to do. Undo. Let's just turn off that bottom. And we'll leave it like that for now. We can change it later if, if we feel the need. Uh, we'll do the same thing to add in the dining table. In this case, I might change its shape slightly. What type of table is it? Uh, we have to choose the rectangular table instead. Let's rotate this. You'll see that the objects that I've used underneath are very, very different from the ones we have available. Again, it's not really an issue. Uh, now, you can do this in a lot of different ways. I tend to, again, for preliminary purposes, just use a slab to represent a kitchen. point and I would normally put a a cover fill on the top of that now I wouldn't use 25% I'd use empty or solid it's probably gonna be that color and white just so it covers uh, but of course that's a sort of not a very detailed way of doing it I could also use the proper tool if I wanted to uh, again I usually don't at least not when I'm starting where do we find those? Under our furniture layout again, we have our kitchen layout here. When I place this, uh, we're just going to do the, um, we could do either the galley or straight or island. We could mix a few of these up, of course. Uh, I'll use the um, just the straight at the moment. And then this looks a bit odd, but what we effectively do is either choose to move or delete parts of these out that we don't want. So for now, I'll just lump everything in just so it's not um, all over the place. We're going to move this into position and then stretch this across. But when we go into 3D, we'll see that that looks very strange. So of course, then I'd go in and I'd, I'd want to start removing, deleting those bits as required. But for now, it's fine. We can do that later. I don't want to get stuck into wasting a lot of time while showing you this video. And for the kitchen island, um, you know, you don't necessarily need to have an island. Of course, it might be useful. We could just do the same thing. Or we could substitute that for the island. Of course, the island is um, not necessarily what we're wanting to create. So we can change that later. Or we could, of course, like I was suggesting, just do that using the slab tool. Or we could use individual kitchen cabinetry. Again, I'll just copy to begin with and then substitute that for kitchen cabinets and then use bits at a time. So maybe that's something like this. And then go from there. So we've got a lot of different options of about how we uh, use objects, how we represent things. Let's have a quick look at the um, more important than furniture, the fixtures. 
Now we're not going to find that, sometimes it's a bit confusing. We can assume that we're going to find the bathroom fixtures under accessories, and then when we scroll down we see it's really not. It's only accessories. What we want to do is go down to mechanical, and then under mechanical we find plumbing fixtures, and that's the stuff that we really want. So if you're new to Archicad, that might throw you for a little bit, and then we're probably going to choose the... Um, WC, water closet, toilet, so the fact that it's not called toilet again might throw you at first. Hopefully you've been taught what that means. And there's a lot of different options. So really I love the look of the bidet to be used as a toilet in terms of simplicity. Um, I'll often use that as a representation, but in terms of the toilet we need to find one that's um, I guess appropriate for what we're trying to do. Maybe that's in wall. So maybe that's what we're going to achieve. We see that that's mostly representing what we're after. And then I think it had um, a lid. I could turn the lid off and then it would make it look a bit more open. Now is that back to wall or does it have uh, some joinery above it like I've shown here? It doesn't matter. Again, it depends all completely on the fixture that you're using, the design style that you're using. Realistically, the, the drawing that we see under is just very preliminary, and as we start to uh, make that more accurate, we need to adjust that for the, the realistic situations. Basins, uh, is it basin in a cabinet, or are we doing uh, freestanding? Again, you've got a lot of different options how you want that to look. I generally don't love using the... Um, the inbuilt options, I again will generally just use a basin and then I will adjust it to suit my needs later. Again, again my method is to copy things existing and then change them rather than um, find them from scratch and place them, it's just the way that I work most effectively and quickly. Now there's very limited, I find, options in terms of um, some of these fixtures with how you might work. I'll use this type of shower style. It's not necessarily uh, an accurate representation of what I'd want it to look like, but it's fine at the moment. We can always replace this later. Uh, and of course, once we've placed it, we can go into the settings and see what other types they have. Um, it's very difficult to tell what that looks like unless we open this up and probably go to the 3D option. And then we need to have a, um, a view that's large enough for us to be able to see the preview and the style at the same time, which isn't always easy. So there's different ways to do that to be able to see what we're trying to do. Uh, Bars. Generally freestanding, but I also use um, built-in rectangular ones as well. In this case, because it's not a very big bar, a built-in rectangular bar is probably going to be better, more justified. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time fiddling with the settings. I'm going to adjust it manually by eye, and then I'll go back into the settings to make sure it's sort of saying the right thing. Now, 1599 is not very good. Uh, let's make that 1600. Uh, and now, of course, the reality, if it's a built-in bath, it might actually be going under the tiles. Now, I haven't shown tiles. I've only shown plasterboard, so I'd have to get that right as well. Uh, 800. Now, that's quite wide for a bath that's that narrow or short, but it'll be fine for now. We can always adjust it later. This is a very, very big basin. Let's reduce this to 500 by 400. And then... To simplify this mirror copy. Again, I don't want to spend too much time doing this. But this should be enough to, to make it start to represent, look the way that you want it. The only thing that I haven't done that I really need to do quite soon is put a slab in. Now, of course, there's more questions that come with that. Does the slab go to the outside of the walls or the inside of the walls? 
what I'm going to do at the moment just to make life simple is magic wand and that will place it to the outside and of course I'll turn off that um, cover fill or I'll change that cover fill to represent maybe the way that I want but it's great to have it there to begin with so we know where the where the slab or where the fill is covering. Turn that off, okay. Now we've got our very simple but um, semi-completed model ready to then start to um, recreate, duplicate, put into our master plan, make sure it's working as a whole. Now what I haven't done, if I turn that trace back on one more time, I haven't actually done the stairs, which is the common area. Uh, we'll look at that later at the moment, we've just been doing the main part. Oops, and one thing I definitely need to add is a front door. There we go. So in the next video, we'll have a look at how to prepare this for and how to create the module file.